Starting a new project in architecture can sometimes feel overwhelming. That's why over the years, I've developed a system and workflow that help guide me through my architectural design process. My name is Vlanka. This channel is an extension of my architecture practice, Verve Architecture Workshop. Here, we will explore tools and techniques for creating architecture, as well as the trials and tribulation of running a small creative firm. In this video, I'll be sharing my personalized design process and workflow, and I will walk you through the steps I follow when starting a new ADU project. This process not only allows me to manage my project more effectively, but also ensure that I create and produce in a systematic manner within a specified time frame. This accessory dwelling unit, also commonly referred to as an ADU, will be submitted for a plan check under the LA Standard ADU program. This initiative is designed to facilitate and create more affordable housing in the city of Los Angeles. When starting a new project, it's important to have a clear understanding of the project goals and client needs. I start by researching the typology and its standards, as well as local codes and regulation that could affect the design and form of the project. First is the site. The site of an architecture project is a crucial element that influence the overall design concept. It is essential to study the site before initiating the design process. One effective method to gain comprehensive understanding of the site is by simply using Google Earth. This can provide an aerial view of the site, offering insights into the surrounding area and its characteristics. However, a physical visit to the site is highly recommended. It allows for a direct interaction with the environment. This first-hand experience can reveal key aspects such as the site's topography, the orientation towards the natural elements such as the sun, wind, existing vegetation, and the overall character of the neighborhood you will gain a profound comprehension of the existing context by just visiting the site in person. Because this project is intended to be a standard ADU that can be adapted to numerous conditions, I research and define a typical Los Angeles residential lot, which will serve as an initial site for this project. Here, is a typical lot size and the typical setbacks with an existing single family residence that could inform the orientation of the ADU. One known factor we can establish in the project is the climate of the site. Los Angeles is known for its moderate weather, categorized as a Mediterranean climate, which have a dry summer and rainy winter, but with relatively modest transition in temperature. To help provide different design strategies based on climate conditions, one reference I use and recommend when starting a new project is the Sun, Wind and Light by Brown and Decay. This classic architecture book is worth having in your architectural library. Due to the site's climate condition, developing an indoor-outdoor space that provides a seamless transition between the new structure and the existing condition is an important concept for this project. The book Sun, Wind and Light helps us develop different forms and layout strategies that are conducive to the project site's climate to provide extended seasonal outdoor comfort zone. After establishing conditions and rules, I like to start my design research with my collection of architecture books. 
I also borrow digital publication from the library to help me look at examples and different approaches. Accessory dwelling units are a practical solution for those who have a need for extra space, either for an office, a guest room, or as a rental space to generate extra income. Since the ADU is an additional structure on the lot, it's important to establish an attitude on how both the existing and the new structure relate to one another. For this project, we'll be designing for young professionals who have a need for a flex space for an office, a guest or a flex space for a gathering. So it's important for the design to connect to the existing home, having either an explicit or an implicit connection is an important design concept that will continue to develop throughout the project. In this phase, I typically like to keep it conceptual, refining and developing my ideas using sketching. This activity is my internal process to produce ideas and concepts. But because this project is intended to be a practical solution, not only affordable to build, but also functional and feasible to construct, I also have to consider how the project functions. Since we want to establish a connection to the existing structure, it's important to figure out the apertures and openings of the ADU. It should be welcoming and facing the main house. Since we are in LA, weather conditions allow this main opening to be fully open, having a seamless transition and creating a connection to the existing conditions. Since we also want to provide accommodations for guests, it's important to provide an option to allow privacy. Here is the entry to the guest room and the main circulation when the main opening is in a closed configuration. With sketching, I also use rough materials such as chipboards, foam core to quickly iterate and to test my ideas into three-dimensional forms. I like to use this modeling technique as part of my process to help me think through a building form with my hands. Here I'm not modeling in any precision or defined dimensions, just trying to get a sense of the overall form and scale. For me, creating a rough study models and sketching ideas help me create and establish an architectural concept that are true to the design philosophy of Verve Architecture Workshop. After a few iterations of sketching and modeling, the next step is to start translating my ideas into digital forms. For schematic design, I use Rhino to build the schemes I have developed earlier. In Rhino, I can start to add more details and precision to the form while still staying close to the main concept. At this stage, I typically will go back and forth between digital modeling and sketching. To keep this process productive and seamless, I use an app called Morfolio Trace which helps me use the digital images I generate from Rhino to use as a base when drawing digitally. Morfolio layers function similar to a trace paper that help me iterate and layer ideas. It also have an internal scale that help when designing to scale. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Morfolio or any other tools I mentioned in the video. I just want to share the tools I use in my process. In order to communicate ideas to clients, I like to use a hybrid technique combining digital model, 
generated from Rhino with digital sketches for initial renderings. At this stage of the project, representations stay fairly conceptual, but you can see I start to visualize standard elements of architecture, walls, roof, openings, and scale. This process and workflow is both an external and an internal process which continue to refine and inform the conception of the project. It also helps communicate design ideas externally for any critique and feedback that help improve the project. I will export massing models from Rhino to use as a base image in order to add texture layers that start suggesting materiality. Then I take this drawing and import to Photoshop and Illustrator to add more elements that help me further visualize the project. After defining the conceptual ideas, then I move to the next stage of the project where I transfer the digital model from Rhino to Revit so that I can build a more precise model and add more details to my drawings. In Revit, I can create more precise orthographic drawings and build out my sections, elevations, and any details I need to understand and communicate the project. But more on that in the future video. I hope this video provided more insight on how to start an architecture project. Of course, there are many ways to design and create architecture. And this is just my own process and workflow that I enjoy and works for me. And if you enjoy this video, hit the like button, share and leave a comment. I appreciate any support for the channel. In a future video, I will continue sharing my process and how I translate my Rhino model into Revit to create project documentation that I will be submitting for the plan check to the city. So make sure to subscribe to the channel.